If you'd like to export a single file for your completed song within Studio One, we can press Ctrl and E and this will bring up the export mixdown dialog, exporting one single file of our, of our entire song. But I'll go ahead and press Escape to close out that window. This video is about exporting stems, so in order to do that we can press Ctrl, Shift, and E, and then this is going to bring up our export stems window. Now again I'm going to press Escape to close that out. The very first thing that we need to do before we export our stems, however, is to come up to the top right. You're going to see a little triangle up there or a handle. We can hover and click, hold, and drag that, and you'll want to extend this out to cover the entirety of your song. Now if your song has any reverb like this one does, you'll want to be sure that this extends out to cover the tail end of that reverb. Now I like to leave a second or two at the beginning of my songs, so I'll pull this in just a little bit and leave a bit of a space there. Now I'll come back to Control Shift and E, and if I actually exit out of full screen mode by pressing Shift and S, if you prefer to use the menu you can come up to Song in the top left corner here, and we have export stems here. You can see the shortcuts for those. Control, Shift, and E. Now you can choose whether you would like to export channels, which will be all of the channels in your console. We can see all of those by scrolling, or we can choose to export tracks, which is going to be a lot less than if we export the channels. And we can see that these correspond to the tracks over here to the left. The next thing that you'll want to do is choose your location by clicking on this ellipsis here. You can navigate to that in the Finder or Explorer on Windows. The file name prefix is going to be placed before each of these track names here or the corresponding channel names. So you'll see export stems dash main, export stems dash snare one, export stems dash snare two, and so on. You get the idea. You can then choose your format from this variety of options here, your resolution and sample rate. We've already got between loops selected. This is active by default, and we set that up with this loop region here. You can go ahead and click export, and then that will begin the process. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here, and if you're someone who is in a rush, then that's pretty much what you need to do to export your stems. But there's a lot more to talk about with exporting stems within Studio One or any DAW. So for those of you who really want to know the, all of the nuances and important details of this process, I urge you to go ahead and stick around. So we're gonna go ahead and bring up that export stems dialog window again. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is the difference between exporting channels and tracks. So why do we have so many more channels? versus when we select our tracks. Okay, so for that, let's cancel out of here and open up our mix console. Now, here, our channel one through seven is gonna be our impact. So in our arrange view, we this represents our impact. So if I click here, we open that up. But if you look at these pads, they are going out on separate channels. So this is channel four, this is channel two, this is channel three, and so on. So while we export tracks, there's only gonna be one for our impact and all of our drum sounds are gonna be exported as one audio file. But when we switch to exporting the channels, we're then gonna be exporting these individual channels for the impact with the individual drum sounds broken out into those separate audio files. Now we also had more that was showing up in the channels option because I have several buses here that I've created. So let's go ahead and bring back our export stems dialog window here. And we're on channels so we can see the individual channels for our perk one, two, kick one, kick two. All of those are here, including our snare one and two. So all those individual channels for the impact are chosen here. And then down at the bottom, we can see our buses here, which are represented with this icon. So these are all of our instrument tracks. This, these are audio tracks here, our shaker bells and our perk three. These are two instrument tracks. Now, another big difference between exporting our channels and tracks is that if we export channels, any processing or effects that we have on our main bus are not gonna be included with those rendered audio files. Now, if we were to choose tracks, anything that we have on the master bus 
will be included with those files. But it's important to keep in mind that these may not sound right because, for instance, if you are using dynamics processing like a compressor, or here I have multiband dynamics, the parameters on these, when I'm, we're making adjustments to these, we're making the adjustments based on all of the tracks being routed through them. So when these are going to be exported one at a time as tracks and include some of these dynamics processing, like the multiband, then they're not going to function in the same way as when we're making the adjustments based on all of the audio signals coming through at one time. So I hope that that makes sense. Now also keep in mind that when we're exporting tracks, the audio files that are rendered down will include any send effects that have been applied to those tracks. So here for our Flute 1, Flute 2, and our Perk 3, these are being sent to a room reverb effects channel here. So this effects channel, this reverb, is going to be applied to the audio files that are rendered down for these tracks, in addition to the processing that we have here on the master bus. If we were to export channels, then you can see that we're going to have an additional channel for our room reverb, that effects channel, that's going to be exported out. Now typically when we're exporting stems, or in this instance, this is another thing, this is technically going to be exporting multi-tracks when we're doing this and selecting all of these individual instruments, say kick one, kick two, our snare, these are going to be individual audio files. This is exporting multi-tracks. If we're going to be exporting stems, technically speaking, this would be, now we can come down here and we can select none to deselect all of our channels. And let's come down and we have our buses. We can see them represented with this icon here. Now, I've got a bus for the two flutes. I've got a drums bus where all of our drum sounds are routed. And I've got a bass for our 808 and I've got a vocal. So all of these channels are being routed to these buses here. And then if we were to export these buses, this is technically exporting stems. So our drums is going to be a combination of the individual drum sounds. Our flute is going to be a combination of the flute 1 and 2, and our bass, our 808, and so on. So if you're going to be working with a mixing engineer and they ask you for multi-tracks, then you're going to want to send them the individual tracks for each sound. If they ask you for stems and you've routed your tracks to buses, as I have, then you're going to want to export the buses. But just talk to them and get that clarified before you send off the files. Now, let's go ahead and cancel out of here again, just so I can show that our flute, so if I come here and select all, we can see that this bus contains our flute one and two. Now here are drums. If I come to this area here and click and select all, then we can see that this contains my snare one and two, perk one and two, kick one and two, shaker bells, and perk three. Now let's scroll over a bit. We then have the bass. And so that's gonna be our 808. And then finally we have our vocal, which is here. So exporting these buses is going to be what we call exporting stems. So we'll bring up the export stems window again and take a look at some of the other options here. Now we saw that we can click on none to deselect everything. We can click active to select everything that's active. And if you notice the Vox sample one is not included and that is because it is muted. If we take a look at that here, in our arrange view, we can see that that Vox sample one is muted. So when I clicked on the active button to select everything that's active, that was not included. Now, if I were to go ahead and check this box, it is going to override uh, the, the mute function here. Now I'll select active again. That's now deselected. We can also select all, and that will just select everything regardless of whether it's muted or not. Now we've seen that we can choose the location for our exported files by clicking on this button here. And we've talked about how the file name prefix is gonna work. Then we have publishing, so you have some publishing options like sending to Notion or uploading to SoundCloud. We then have the format, as we saw, a lot of different options here. So if you're gonna choose WAV, typically if you're sending to an audio engineer, mix engineer, you're gonna want a higher resolution, 24-bit. Uh, you can also confirm with them, but we can go all the way up to 64-bit float. We can choose the sample rate here, all the way up to 192. 
And then we have between loop. And so that's why we set our loop region here, but we can also choose between song and end marker. So if I select that, let's cancel out. And then we'll come here to the global track visibility. Let's show our marker track. Now we can see here is our start and this is our end marker. So when we choose that option, we're gonna be exporting between these two markers here. Now we can also choose between each marker. So then that's gonna export individual files between each of these markers. Next, we can choose between selected markers. So if I select here, we can come to the drop down menu and choose between three and four, four and five, and so on, which will correspond to these. And then at the bottom, we have a duration that's gonna show up depending on what we select here. So if I choose three and four, we can see that's 16 seconds, four and five, 33 seconds, and so on. If I come back to between loop, then we can see this is gonna be two minutes and two seconds. Below that, we can choose to split mono. We have keep speaker format. So we can see our kick one and two and our 808 are mono, but these are gonna be rendered down as stereo. So if you'd like to keep the mono for format, you can choose keep speaker format. And now we can see that they're gonna be exported at their original setting. We can use real-time processing. So if you're using external hardware, like a compressor or reverb EQ, you're gonna to need to select the real-time processing so that hardware can process it in real time. We have the option to write tempo to audio files. So when we have this selected, each of the exported audio files will contain the tempo of our song here. We can choose to import to track. So once they've been rendered down, they'll then be imported to tracks within our song, new tracks. We then have close after export, which is selected by default. And this is basically gonna close our export stems dialog and open up the Explorer on Windows or the Finder on the Mac to the location that we've chosen to export our files. So just to recap a few important things regarding effects and processing, if we're gonna be exporting our channels, these will not include the master bus processing. If we're gonna export our tracks, these will include any processing or effects that we have here. And they will also include any processing from the effects channels like the room reverb that we may have routed these tracks to. Now, typically we're gonna be exporting sims to have someone else do the mixing and mastering and these sorts of things. So if you'd like to easily turn off all of your processing that's on your channels, don't do it one by one. You can just come to the global power button here, click on this, and then we can see that all of our processing has been deactivated. One last thing to keep in mind is that if you are making use of the mix effects here, then this is not going to be powered on or off when we make use of the global inserts power button here. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful and I'd like to end with saying that I do offer one-on-one -on -one training via Zoom. So if you are someone who would like to speed up your learning curve with Studio One or if you're having any technical issues, or anything at all, feel free to reach out. You can find more information in the description of this video or the pinned comment below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.